Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. So for today's video, we are going to do on tea. So there has been a, a report that there is a, decl a decline in the tea production in India due to this uh, COVID pandemic. And so that's why we're going to cover this topic. And under this, we also try to cover some of the topics on the plantation crops. So we'll be discussing MCQs and we'll try to learn all the important points to these questions as well, okay? So guys, uh, my name is Hansa Nora Sangma and I've done my bachelor's in horticulture and I've also completed my master's in nematology. And before moving further, if you guys are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And you can also press the bell icon for further notifications from our channel, for the upcoming exams, as well as you can also get a lot of exam related content in our channel. And if you've liked the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button as well as you can share with your friends whoever is giving the exam. Right, so now let's move on to our first slide which is on tea production. So basically we all know that tea cultivation is a huge in India as well, especially in the southern states as well as in Assam and the northeastern states. So this tea, it is, um, uh, it is an evergreen, right? And it is valued mostly for its young leaves and leaf buds. And it is used as a beverage everywhere all over the world. And uh, the plant species, its scientific name is Camellia scientific right and we also have another origin which is can be from China as well as from Assam which is uh, uh, Camellia sinensis bar Assamica right so these are made of the, uh, some of the brief overview of tea and uh, now let's look into this slide and uh, so there has been a decline in the tea production as per the report they said that uh, the output would uh, would fall by 54% which is about 39.02 million kilogram in the month of April right so and since Assam is one of the uh, largest producer of tea in India and it has uh, due to this restriction and in, uh, because of the pandemic there has been a decline in the output so they said that there might be a decline in about uh, seven, 76 percent of the output or which is the production okay so the production it actually drops from 44.9 uh, 8 million kg which was the production of last year and to 13.21 million kg this year so it dropped by nearly half a um, majority of the production has been dropped as you can see from the stats right and but again however in production in south india they rose to from 14.02 million kg to 15.11 million kg so there was an there was an increase of about seven percent was seen in the production in the southern states of India. So in the near future, they're expecting a decline in the production by about nine percent, or about which comes up to about one twenty million kg is usually expected in the near future. Okay, I hope this is clear. And now uh, let's just talk a brief overview about this tea, okay? So India is the second largest producer of tea, right? So China is the largest producer and uh, after that India is the second largest producer. And they produce about uh, 1.3 billion kg of tea. It was produced in the year of 2019, okay? Guys, uh, I would request you all to whenever you study any crops, uh, again, since we're talking about plantation crops, so I would request you all to check the uh, recent updated data about its production, the highest producers and uh, the largest producing states in uh, India, okay? So now let's look into the uh, top uh, five st uh, countries who are the major produ producers in tea okay first one is china and we have india we have kenya and then comes sri lanka and vietnam right and these five uh, countries right so they account for about at least to 82 percent of the global tea export so this it's a huge number so majority of the export comes from this uh, top five producing tea producing countries okay and the top tea producing state in India is Assam right so this is an these are very important data 
uh, exams a lot of times they have asked on the production in the exams as well so be prepared with all of these uh, uh, producers highest production right the lowest production and the increase in the production right all these are very important from the exam point of view and now not some tea producing states in India are the second one is West Bengal is also very high we have a Darjeeling tea from West Bengal we have Tamil Nadu right and we also have Kerala Tripura Arunachal Pradesh Himachal uh, Karnataka Sikkim Nagaland Uttarakhand Manipur Mizoram Meghalaya Bihar and Odisha so these are the few states in India which produce tea okay so these are something about the rough introduction about tea and now let's move on to another slide which is on the question so to now we're going to continue with our plantation crops we're going to study about uh, more about plantation crops through these questions all right so be prepared uh, uh, if you guys know the answer do comment in the comment section right side by side and we'll try to solve the questions so in question number one it says which of the following is the highest oil palm producing country okay the options here given are a is nigeria number b is india number c indonesia number d malaysia number e is congo right so guys the right answer for this is let's move to the new next slide it is indonesia okay so indonesia it is the highest uh, oil palm producing state a country in the world right so i've given the top three states okay the first one is indonesia we have malaysia we have colombia right and they account for about 85 percent of the global production in the whole world so 85 it's like majority of the produce uh, production comes from these three countries all right and in india the major producing states they are Andhra Pradesh okay we have Karnataka, Assam, Kerala and Gujarat so these are the five top states uh, which produces palm oil or the pa uh, oil palm okay if we can look into the graph this uh, so this graph it shows the leading producers of palm oil worldwide which is for the year of 2019 to 2020 okay and you can see that Indonesia it has the highest uh, producing and it, this is in the terms of 1000 metric tons okay and they cross about 42 point five hundred uh, 42,500 metric tons of this uh, palm oil production all right now let's go to the another slide where we're going to discuss something about this oil pump so the scientific name of uh, this palm oil is Elias guinnesses right and they belong to the family of palmae all right so this is the family this is the scientific name so this palm oil it is currently the most world's most consumed vegetable oil right so remember that and it uh, the main consumers is india we have china and some the european union as well so this is one of the highest yielding uh, crops among all the perennial crops right so remember that as well and there is uh, basically this uh, vegetable oil or this edible vegetable oil is de derived from the mesocarp which is the reddish pulp of uh, if you can see in the picture you can see the reddish pulp right so the oil is uh, derived from this mesocarp right of the oil palms right right another point is that this red palm these are rich in carotenes uh, such as the alpha carotenes beta and as well as the lycopene so in that way this pigment which is which imparts a color red color in these palm oil is due to carotenes right and they give this characteristic dark red color right and these are also used in a lot of things not just as the uh, not as just the uh, as a vegetable oil but then they are used in other commodities so these are used in any other a lot of products such as at the consumer uh, retail food and uh, by the snack manufacturers we also they also use this in uh, personal care and as well as in cosmetics as a biofuel and energy uh, as well as an uh, as well as an animal feed uh, all the industrial uh, corporate country uh, industrial as well as in the industrials and pharmaceutical as well so it has an, a lot of uh, uses that this palm oil is used in but other than that a lot of clearing of the forest because for the high um, plantation of this has caused the deforestation as well as another environmental uh, problems as well 
So these are something on the palm oil and now let's move on. Right, so in 1992, the oil palm development program was launched, right? So I've just given some of the um, important development programs, which is very important from the exam point of view. So try to jot it down. So there was this oil palm development program. It was launched in the year of 1992, okay? And this was followed by an oil palm area expansion, which is also known as OPAE program in the year of 2011 to 12. So these points, uh, I'm going to mark it. These are very important, okay? So please uh, jot it down. And now let's go to another question which says, which of the following is the highest coconut producing state? Right, so guys, for this question, I would like you all to answer. Drop it in the comment section if you guys have any ideas or if you guys have any guesses. Okay, so let me just tell you guys the options. The option number A is Tamil Nadu. Number B is Kerala. Number C is Assam. Number D is Andhra Pradesh. Number E is Maharashtra. Okay, guys. So out of these states, which is the highest producing coconut uh, state in the country? Drop it in the comment section, right? Now let's go to another question, which is on the when was the National Research Center for Cashew established? Okay. So before going further, I would like you all, whenever you study all these uh, about crops and everything, I uh, it's very important to know the uh, places or when it was established of all these research centers pertain, uh, related to that particular crop okay so as well as all the full form and acronyms all of that try to learn all these okay so the options given here are number a is 1990 number b is 1986 we have uh, number c 1998 number d is 1978 and number e says 1984 so guys the right answer for this is number b which is 1986 right so this national research for cashew it is at Puttar, okay? It was established in the year of 1986 on 18th June, right? So this research on the cashew in India was first initiated in the early, at early as 1950s. So at around 1950s only, they have started all these research on the cashew in India, right? But the establishment had started from 1986 itself. So, but in 19. 71 the icr they which is also known as indian council of agriculture research they sanctioned this all india coordinated spice and cashew improvement project which is also known as aics and cip with its headquarters located in icar central plantation research institute which is in kasarpur okay so these um, situated the places where these uh, research institutes are situated as well as when it was first established these are very important jot it down make a table or make notes of it and this is very important from the exam point of view okay guys so do not leave out these important points whenever you are studying or whenever you're preparing for these exams be it NAPARD or be it for IVPSSO okay so now let's move on this uh, cashew, it is also the scientific name. It is known as Anarchidium occidental, right? It is a native tree of eastern Brazil. So now we're going to the origin as well. So whenever you study again, origin, always try to study the origin, the place where it was first originated from, okay? So every crop, every different crops or vegetables or fruits, they all have different origin. So try to study all that origin as well. So this was introduced to India by the Portuguese in the 16th century. And the production and productivity of cashew is highest in the state of Maharashtra. We have Andhra Pradesh and we have Orissa. So these are the highest state producing okay, of for these cashew nuts. So these are very important and try to study all of these parts. And especially uh, I would like to stress on the processing uh, which will be after the post-harvest handling, right? So after you have produced, after the harvest, whatever processing that has to be done, these are very important for these plantation crops because majority of the questions can come from the processing, especially for these plantation crops, right? 
And now let's move look into another slide where I've just given some of the important research stations on plantation and beverage crops, right? So the first one here is in coconut. Uh, so coconut, we have a central plantation crop research institute, which is in Kasod Gold. We've just talked about it, right? So we also have every canal, we have the reg regional research station, uh, which is in Vidal, which is in Karnataka, okay? We have Kokowa, CPCRI reg uh, regional research station, which is in Vidal again. For rubber, we have a Rubber Research Institute of India, which is in Kotayam in Kerala. Kashinad, we have Directorate of Kashi Research, which is in Puttar, uh, Karnataka. Oil Palm is a National Research Center, which is in the Andhra Pradesh, okay? Palmyra, this is also the same National Research uh, Center, which is in Tamil Nadu. And we have T, we have Research Institute, United Planters Association of South India, which is in the Tamil Nadu. And we also have for coffee, Central Coffee Research Institute, which is in Karnataka. So all these uh, research stations, uh, along with the places where we're situated, along with the establishment date, is very important. Okay, guys? So do study all these. Do not miss it out. Okay? Another one here, our question number third is, uh, selection, select the plantation crop out of the following. Okay? So guys, the options given here, this is a very simple question, very basic. I think... I think all of you guys will be knowing this. So uh, number A is rubber. We have number B, sugarcane. Number C is cotton. Number D is potato. And number E says all the above. Guys, the right answer for this is rubber. So rubber is a plantation crop. Sugarcane is not a plantation crop. A lot of times we might get confused whether sugarcane is a plantation crop or not. But no, this is not a plantation. Uh, in the next slide, in the upcoming slide, we're going to discuss which are the plantation crops, all right? And we also have potato. So this is a completely vegetable crop. So this is not a plantation crop. Okay, so in this slide, we are going to discuss what the plantation crops are, right? And then we also have got to jot down some of the important plantation crops as well. So the first part, the first uh, uh, definition that you're going to be going to discuss is that this is this plantation crops, these are a group of commercial crops, right? So these are mainly done for commercially. And these are all perennial in nature, means that they are perennial. So they don't, we also have this annual, biennial, and perennial, right? So for per, uh, annuals, they have the, the whole life cycle of the plant, it ends in a season, right? But then for biennial, it's, it means two season. And for perennial, it means that it can go up to more than two seasons as well. So uh, these are perennial in nature. We have cultivated, they are cultivated extensively in tropical and subtropical situations. And they need employment of labor throughout the year and the produce of which are usually consumed after processing. So remember, these plantation crops, they cannot be consumed right after the harvest. So they have they need to go for processing for further consumption, right? So as you can know, uh, we all know that even tea as well, the tea leaves that we pluck, it needs to go for processing. Even the coffee that we produce, the coffee beans has to go for uh, processing, right? Then only after that, we can consume it or you can use it, right? So these are some of the things on this. These are a simple, simply what a plantation crops are or maybe in a traditional sense. So we can just tell that Plantation crops are those which are cultivated on extensive, right? So extensively, they are in, in extensively, they are cultivated or in extensive scale, like tea, coffee, rubber. And uh, this term plantation or an estate is ma uh, mainly used as a synonym, right? So plantations or estates, these are, they come in term return. So so basically they are in simpler terms they are a large scale agriculture unit usually of a single crop right so monoculturing single crop in a large scale so this is what plantations are okay i hope this is clear right and uh, now let's look into some of the important plantation crops right so i've jotted down the important point plantation crops so these are the list of plantation crops do not get confused try to note it down okay so for this i would suggest that you guys study the production the highest producer the uh, with be it in the world or be it in india okay so these are uh, no matter what you do but do not forget these three points okay uh, all right so now let's go to our first point which is in the oil yielding crops okay which gives you oil right so the oil yielding crops will be your 
uh, coconut, we have oil palm, we've just discussed, and we also have a palmera, okay? For masticatory, it is areca nut, right? And we also have betel vine, so areca nut it is. So we also have this beverage crops, which is tea, coffee, and cocoa. And we have nut crops, and the nut crops, we have cashew nuts. So we have industrial crops, which has rubber, okay? So these are the lists of plantation crops, right? And as you jot it down, try to study about all of this not in depth but just have some idea about what they do and how they're produced especially in the processing part okay guys right now let's go to our last question our last question says consider the following statements and identify the right ones so number a says coffee is a tropical plantation crop and number b is there are three varieties of coffee which is uh, arabica we have robusta and we have Liberia, okay, and the third statement says coffee has caffeine but not tannins, right, guys? So, the right answer for this is all of the above. See, as all of these statements are true, so guys, now let us look into why these statements are correct, right? So, the first thing is that this plant, this coffee, it is a tropical evergreen, right? So, it is, it needs a higher temperature, more humidity, and higher rainfall, a humid temperature. And uh, so basically, if it's a tropical, then it'll be around above 25 degrees Celsius, right? And they are evergreen shrub, okay? So there are small trees. It means that they are very small in height. They are not a tree. They are just a shrub. Evergreen, it's like they, uh, they do not... Um, they do not shed their own leaves, right? So we also have the uh, thing that this origin is from Africa, okay? So it is of an African origin, remember that, right? And the genus is coffee and the family is rubaceae. So we have different um, different species under this, right? So we're going to talk about that again. So this Arabica species of coffee it is cultivated mostly in the Latin America and while this Robusta, it is predominant or cultivated widely in Africa. So these both species are grown in India, Indonesia, as well as in the Asian countries, okay? So these points are important. So um, we also have three different species. Liberica, this is not as common as this Robusta and Arabica, but Liberica is also another species of this um, coffee but this it is a low yield type of coffee as we can compare it to the arabica or the robusta okay so this robusta this is a type of coffee which contains about 2.5 percent more caffeine than the other types and they have a pretty strong taste whereas this arabica they are low in caffeine more smoother and they have 80% of the coffee is produced from these type of beans. Remember that, okay? And if guys, if you guys want to know more about it, we also have, we've also really done uh, something in our previous lectures on coffee in more in detail about the production. So that's why I'm not going to uh, explain this in detail anymore. So if you are having doubt, you can go back to our old lectures and you can find out uh, there's a topic called on plantation. We have covered it under the MCQs of plantation crops. So you ba so that you can watch that video again and you'll get have more clearer idea about this coffee, right? And now let's look into the constituents of coffee. Right, so the third third statement states that coffee they contain caffeine but not tannins, right? So now let us look why. Okay, so caffeine the uh, coffees, these are all, uh, caffeine is present in tea as well as in coffee, right? So caffeine is present, it is an alkaloid substance. They have the stimulating property, okay? And another point here is that this tannins, right? Uh, so another point is that in the flavor. So remember the flavor is due to the sulfur compound, right? So this is also important. Uh, I think all these uh, chemical compounds which impart this particular taste in certain crops these are very important as well as uh, even the pigments right so all these points are very important from the exam point of view so please um, do not miss that out as well and this is a sulfur the flavor of this coffee is due to sulfur compound right and they are the main contributors to this flavor and we also have last one which is in the bitter substances which is due to this polyphenol substance or the tannins okay so this bitter substance is caused due to polyphenol substance or which is also known as the tannins right so these are some of the points on coffee right i hope this is clear if you guys have more doubt under this 
topic you can uh, drop in the comment section and we can always explain and you can also reach out to us as well so that we can always help you guys out if you guys are having tr trouble in any of the topics or if you guys want more help in how to prepare all of these exams right so guys that's all for today if you guys have liked the video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button do prepare well for your exams the exams are on hold but at the same time when you're having time right now it's the right time for you all to prepare well so that you guys can do very well in the exams right and please don't forget to subscribe if you guys are new to this channel and you can also press the bell icon and we'll be meeting for the next session